Welcome to Quick Action Medicine. My name is Fintai and I'm an assistant professor in the hospitals here in South Carolina. On this channel, we discuss medicine and topics around medical education. So feel free to subscribe if you're into that. Today, I'll be talking about a very short you know, concept and it's an under, underrepresented or under you know, emphasized thing in medicine uh, uh, that has to do with the way that we think about diagnosis in general. And I wanted to say it to everyone, whoever is, whoever is listening, whether you're in training or you're you know, attending experience and you know, whatever the case may be, you have to appreciate that most of what we do within internal medicine and perhaps maybe across most specialties, but internal medicine specifically, I would say, most of what we do is pattern recognition. You see a patient that presents with a problem, you look at all of the components, all of the data that you're able to gather from that patient, from the history, physical exam, workup, and beyond to be able to come up with a disease entity that fits a particular pattern. And it's important to know this because I think obviously everybody does that, but it's important to be conscious about it. So when you're thinking about diseases and you think about disease entities and you're making your documentation even, the integrity of your documentation is significantly you know, improve if you're thinking like that. So for example, if you're going to write that a patient has acute coronary syndrome, because of the pattern recognition, what you're documenting should be able to support that. You know, chest pain, you know, is this chest pain in fact of coronary artery disease origin? Is there EKG findings to support that particular diagnosis? Is there cardiac enzymes? And, and that's what you're thinking about. If, if Even before that, if you have a patient who's presented with anything, you know, whatever chief complaint that is, that chief complaint has to trigger a particular pattern in your mind. First of all, the differentials. And based on the differentials, based on the feature, the, the additional information about the chief complaint, it triggers differentials, and based on the differentials, you're able to generate the workup. It's all pattern recognition. It's all pattern recognition. And the way to be able to even consolidate that even better is to think of the information that you gather as disease identifiers. So the chief complaint is a disease identifier. The history of presenting illness and all of the data points, you, all of the information you're able to gather in the you know history of presenting illness they're all disease identifiers. Physical examination findings are all disease identifiers. Workup findings, these are all disease identifiers. And you want to be able to use all of these things to build a pattern, to build, you know, it's almost as, as if you, you're having a building block. You're using information and building and building and so you're boom, yeah, this is the disease entity I'm dealing with. And now it's clear what you're treating. Because the majority of the problem within you know, in term medicine, whether from a training perspective or even to a practice perspective, is lack of clarity, you know, lack of clarity within, with our plans. And lack of clarity will cost you a lot. Obviously, safety for the patient, you know, throughput within the hospital, because if you don't have a clear plan as to what you're doing, if you haven't identified what is really going on based on the pattern that you've constructed, that you're able to stand by even within your documentation, it's almost difficult to get things moving accordingly. So it's it's important to establish this fact. I wish I could I could make it as a standard that people have, you know, practices around, you know, pattern recognition. Boom, this diagnosis, what are the disease identifiers? This, 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 this. So if you do that well enough, you realize that when you're writing your notes, when you're saying that this is a diagnosis, you're not gonna put all sorts of things that don't fit or don't really support that diagnosis because in your mind there's a pattern. There is a pattern for COPD exacerbation, shortness of breath, wheezing, <clears throat> you know, history of COPD, maybe tobacco smoking, all of these things. They, some of them may sound big, but they are all disease identifiers that establish a particular disease entity. And it's, it's important to be very, very clear that, you know, even though people do subconsciously, but that's how we think. It's, it's even for people like us who are in, you know, into training residents and students, it's important to communicate that, that you don't have to beat around the bush. You don't have to be overwhelmed by residents and students. It's important to communicate that, that you don't have to beat around the bush. You don't have to be overwhelmed by all sorts of data and information that's coming your way. Just focus on the pattern. If these are your sets of differentials, do you have enough information that supports one differential over the other? It's all pattern recognition. I can't say it enough. Pattern recognition. Think of you know the information you gather as disease identifiers and use them as building blocks to make 
the diagnosis. It helps everybody, the patient, yourself, the system, it helps everybody. So I just thought I'd put that out there. Our job is pattern recognition, and you build that as the clinician by gathering all of the information that you put in to support whatever diagnosis that you're saying that this patient has. And if you haven't figured it out, you know, separate it. Okay, COPD looks likely because of this, 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 this. CHF looks likely because of this, 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 this. And you're much clearer, you're more in control. Patients do better for that. I hope that connected. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye, bye.